Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. That's right. Comedian Lil Rel is here. Lil Rel is back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, you look hey, just like Lil Rel. Shout out to the ladies, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know Lil Rel? I know who Lil Rel is, yeah. You ever seen Lil Rel when he be in character, playing rappers and all kind of stuff? Oh, so when he gets sexy, he look like me. <laughs> Pink Sweats is here. Welcome, sir. Good morning, bro. What's going on, guys? Now, with the name Pink Sweats, I know you hear this a million one time. Do you always got to wear pink? <clears throat> I don't always have to, but I like pink, so it's mm-hmm. cool. It's it works. Fun. It goes with the theme. Yeah, and it's easy. You go in the store, you're like, all right, they ain't got pink, I walk out. <laughs> and how did you get the name Pink Sweats? Let's start from the beginning. I was just wearing pink sweats, straight up. Pink sweat like, pants? Was when yeah. You, like broke, you had like one pair? That... Literally. Gotcha. One pair from H&M. Mm-hmm. I ain't proud of it, but you know what I mean? Uh, and then What's somebody wrong said H&M? it. I mean, you know, they be getting a lot of slack. Mm. But they was cheap. Okay. Oh, because of the coolest monkey in the jungle thing. That's yeah. what it was. Right. Yeah, 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 and you know yeah, how yeah. you always wear something so people just start calling you that? Oh, they go. Yeah, it was sweat. literally like that. So I was, because I was just a songwriter. Then mm-hmm. I would, I didn't care how I dress. Throw on some sweatpants, and somebody was like, "Yo, where are pink sweats at?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Damn, bet." <laughs> where are those pink sweats now? Because I'm sure they inspired some Man. great music back in the day. I'm just done. <laughs> you don't even just have a frame nowhere. Nah. You know how you wear something so much it start falling apart? Yeah. That, that's those pants. Damn it, man. Why pink, though? Like, did you did you ever witness, like, Cameron and Dipset wearing pink back in the day and get inspired? Like, why pink specifically? I did, actually, because, like, I grew up, like, mad Christian, but I always was into fashion when I was younger, and I remember seeing, like, Cameron. It was, like, the craziest thing, because I didn't really know who he was, because I wasn't allowed to listen to that, but I was like, who is this dude? He had like a pink, pink t-shirt mate. on. Yeah. It was like just pink a pink Range t-shirt Rover. at the time when I yeah. saw it. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, that's fresh. And I like I got a pink t-shirt. And then like my birthday's on Valentine's Day, so like everything just lined up like that. You were meant to be a lover, huh? I am a lover. Break, yeah. break down what is mad Christian. What is mad Christian? <laughs> the way I say <laughs> Christian Christian. Right here, right here. So when you ask somebody how they doing, they're like, I'm blessed and highly favored. They mad Christian. Well, I say when people ask me that, I say I'm blessed, black, and highly favored. Yeah, you added the black. You good. Okay. But- when they have like sayings, when you can't never get a straight answer, <laughs> Yeah. that's how you know you're bad, Christian. <laughs> if everything got Jesus in it, you're like, yo, what you eat today? You know, I had a blessed meal <laughs> down at the, <laughs> you're like, oh, you mad, Christian. <laughs> okay. So you grew up singing in the church? Nah, I played drums in the church. Mm-hmm. I never, really nobody at my church even knew I could sing. Mm-hmm. Did you know you could sing? Nah, I didn't. I was like mad insecure about my voice because my mom is a singer and she's a beast. So you know what's like, crazy? Most guys that play drums in the church are horse. I was a horse. Most guys that play <laughs> drums in the church are sleeping with every single woman in the church. He's just saying that because Wax that's out there is, is a drummer in hey, the church. Man, it ain't and a stereotype if it's true. And he, yeah, I guess right. So were you He's like a, a fan of, of Questlove being from Philly and seeing what a great drummer he is? Uh, Yeah, Questlove, but also one of my main favorites was this guy Spanky out of mm-hmm. Philly. He's... It's crazy. Now back to you sleeping with the pastor's daughter now. So when you was a drummer, my pastor ain't have a daughter. Shout out for that. Shut up, shut up, man. I know where you going next. <laughs> you did sleep with a bunch of women in the church though. Yeah. <laughs> Is that when you knew that she wasn't ready to get baptized? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta fake it till you make it. You know what I mean? I got baptized, but you know I ain't proud of it. But you know that was I didn't ask to be in that environment. My parents forced me, and every time I asked them to not be there, like. You'll like it one day. I'm You're like, a heathen. <laughs> <laughs> You'll like it one day. That's what my dad said. I'm like, for real? Dang, that's crazy. So that turns you away from Jesus in a way. Nah, I just religion just doesn't add up to me logically. I agree. But what doesn't add up? It's all like male dominated. I, yes. I never liked that, mm-hmm. especially because I have a mother, I have grandma, aunts, and it's like, dang, I go here all the time. It's always women, and like listening to a man telling you about what men said in the Bible and it's like, come on, man. Y'all fall for this? That's how I feel. Even mm-hmm. though I get it, like my mom still goes to church and I don't knock it, but just for me, it's like, nah. When's the last time you've been to church? It's been a while. Um, I used to still play drums at church. Mm-hmm. So Years? It's been like a year and a half. Oh, year and a half. Yeah. How does your mom feel about your career now? You know, they love it now. Really? <laughs> they, they don't mind you making that secular music? They don't mind the secular money. <laughs> <laughs> but at first, at first it was difficult for them? 
No, nah, it wasn't difficult, but it was like, you know, my mom would be like, you know, you're not doing your thing for God, so that's why it's hard. I'm like, no, it's hard because people ain't shit. But your music is still very respectful toward women. It's not anything that you, know, you could be embarrassed, like, for your mom to come to the show and hear you singing. Nah, but, like, before I was a songwriter, so it was like I was writing all kinds of songs, raps, well, everything. <laughs> Who did you write songs for? Ah, I'm not going to talk about that. But I work with now, I'll mm -hmm. say, like, people that I actually enjoy. I love my boys, Drew and Alex, Chainsmokers, BB Rexa, um, Shawn Mendes. A lot of stuff before was just, like, I'm trying to get in. Mm -hmm. Like, I wasn't, I don't, I didn't even grow up listening to rap, to be honest. Like, really? I know Kanye West. I know 50 Cent. He couldn't. When he he said he couldn't. I couldn't. Like, it was just, nah. Like, my dad, like, yo, you playing with me? <laughs> like, my bad. <laughs> What's the first rap song you got caught listening to? Uh, I really I don't th I can't remember. It was I was probably so young to the point where it was like, all right, we know not to play that game no more. Mm -hmm. So it was like my uncle he listened to like Fifty when he first came out, and I got turned on to that. And then Kanye, you know, when they had a little beef, a little battle. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. so I would go to my uncle's house, and he would always just put me on. Now, when you were first trying to get on and writing for other people financially. <laughs> Man, Where blow your nose, fit? man. What you saving your snack? I got for? allergies. It's, not, oh. it's nothing in there. You want some? I got. Uh, Can whoa. I finish my question, Charlamagne? <clears throat> Damn. My so bad. now, growing up, right, and writing songs for other people, when you first became a songwriter, financially, were you taken care of, or was it a situation where you had to pay your dues? You gonna give him drugs, man? Hey, right up. on camera. <laughs> he giving me zans, y'all. Be careful. I don't know what it. Make sure it's not blue. Him. I know. He's I see these pills. I know what they look like. We got allergies. We know what it is, man. But um, financially, it was, like, me, I was always, like, a hustler. So I knew how to, like, get to the money. It was just mm -hmm. getting to the position where it made sense. Because, like, you know, you got drug dealing and stuff. They'll pay you a bag to, like, write some shitty rap. But <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it doesn't go anywhere after that. So it's, like, me, it was never really about the money because it's, like, yo, I'm going to make money mm -hmm. eventually to the level that I want. It's just about being in position for my career, like, them giving me 10K or something is not going to help me in my career because nobody's going to hear the song. It help you for the time being. Yeah, it's like, yo, I could pay some bills or whatever. You know what I mean? But how, did the the work, how did you even get into it? Like, yeah, how, how did, did the, the work that you used to write? I'm really good, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying you in Philly. Like, what? what how did it be like the kid in the pink sweats can write? Um, let me take this, whatever he gave me. So if I pass out, y'all know it was his hand or something. Okay, so... Rephrase, rephrase. Let me get that back. All right. I so said, how did you get into writing? I, I, how how did, do people know you could write? know you were a writer. Oh, so what happened was I used to go to the studio with like family friends after high school or whatever, and I would just like sing whatever songs they had, like demo them for them. And then one day, one of the songs wasn't finished, so I was like, cool, let me just try something. So I go in the booth, da da da, sing or whatever. And then it was like, yo, how long you been doing this? I was like, like for real like just now it was like word stay so i was like stay in the studio for like a whole week mm -hmm. literally i ain't go home and i'm just writing 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 new songs and then people would just coming in and out some people you know how, like sometimes it's somebody's cousin mm -hmm. hey yo my cousin boom and then they'll like make a plug and it's like word of mouth mm -hmm. philly's so interesting to me man because you got it's so so much versatility in artists you go from Jill Scott to the roots, the people like Bilal and Music Soul Child, and you got all the street oh, so. shit like State Property and Santi Gold. Dream Chasers, Meek Mill, uh, mm -hmm. and even rappers now like Uzi <laughs> and then you. Like, you're not a rapper, but still, just the way all, I wonder where all that versatility comes from. I don't know, man. It's just Teddy Pendergrass, church. <laughs> Listen, church, man, because all these people they all went to church, mm -hmm. man. So it's something that's happening in these churches, even if it ain't baptisms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's something flowing that just, you know, gets on us. And when we go out there and do our thing, it's just like muscle memory almost. So you went from the drums of the church to saying, you know what, I actually do want to make music. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it's weird because like, the whole time I was at my church, like, they knew that I did music. Like, but they didn't know what I did. So, like, mm -hmm. when I became, like, Pink Sweats and everything started working out, they was like, oh, my God, it finally worked. I'm like, I just started this 12 months ago. <laughs> like, the whole time I was writing songs. They're like, oh, what does that even mean? I don't get it. Now, see, you can't you can't have something like that happen and then not, not say look at God. You got oh, no, I mean, I listen, it's, it's, I feel like 
it's universal though. Like I believe in like a universal God versus like putting a specific. Like why does it have to be a man? That's the thing. Like yeah. when you think about God, why do they say He? Your spirits are not religious. Yeah, you don't. Basically. Yeah, exactly. You we don't, don't know, know what God is. I would hope God is not a man or a woman. Yeah, like <laughs> that would be weird. Or an animal. Think about all the different things that God has created on this earth. We, you know, I get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You How long know. did it take you to get on though? How long did that happen? How long was that process for you to finally get heard and get signed? Uh, I literally I just got signed not that long ago. Mm-hmm. So before I was just pushing it with me and my manager. I was writing all my own money that I had like saved up essentially, just pushing everything on Spotify and whatever. So why'd you do a deal and why didn't stay independent? Because I mean, you were. Come on, your name man. was buzzing for a minute. <laughs> Come on, man. You know why? Nah, because you were, your name was buzzing for a while. You didn't necessarily need a deal because you was doing shows and. <clears throat> Okay, so the honest truth is, so you've been lying. I felt like I felt like (laughs) no, no. I mean, concerning this specific question, Mm -hmm. for me it was like I don't know if everybody's seen my videos and stuff, but like I like to do stuff of quality. So it's like, yeah. So it's like videos are dope for me, and then also they're my friends who was helping me do this. So it was like where these video budgets would have been way crazier. It was like we were able to get friends to do little things here and there, and I I don't really like doing that to my friends. So it was like. I want to have money to pay them mm-hmm. properly, you know what I'm saying, and make sure everybody can eat versus me just always, because they don't get royalty, they make videos. So it's like, I'm the only one eating. It's like, well, we helped you, you know what I mean? So right. it's like, how can I make a play that can benefit everybody? And then also, my label just came with the crazy bag. So it was like, mm-hmm. It was a, a nice bidding war for you before you ended up at Atlantic. Yeah, for real. God damn, you on Atlantic too? Yeah, I'm on the Atlantic. So I'm on the Atlantic really got everybody. And let me tell you something. I went to go see you perform in New York, and the whole Atlantic team was there. When I tell you, Julie Greenwald was there, Craig okay. Kalman was there, Mike Kaiser was there. They came out to, in full support. They were like, you got to come to this Pink Sweat yeah. Show. I love my label, man. Shoot. I, listen, I got a great deal. Okay. <laughs> great. <laughs> and that's also good because you can write for other artists too, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, like, for me, the biggest thing is people think, like, I just because naturally I think you just try to box somebody in as like, oh, he's an artist. Nah, I write songs for people every day. So mm-hmm. it's like, Is it interesting I love to, it. to you to see people like Little Nas X doing this country song that's number one on the charts and you've written country songs and things like that as well and how people do box music into different genres, but you're able to write for all different genres because you listed all these artists that you work with and you're not just one thing. Um, it doesn't surprise me with the generation, but also like what he did was very unique. So in a way, to me, I feel like that's dope because I used to make beats like that, probably a little more. Like I would make country songs and just like put a trap beat, and I was like, dang, nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> but now that it's done to like a high level, people are like more open to it. So shout out to him. So when you do stuff with like Florida Georgia Line, you didn't give them what you. Th- think country music sounds like or you made something f- that sounds like I guess traditional country music well I just did whatever I, now I just make whatever kind of music I want I don't try to like chase anything so it was more like honestly the song that they chose was like a song I was like really <laughs> cool like I, I it wasn't a country song at all mm-hmm. so you know but I feel like shout out to hip hop it, it's growing black music in a way where people are paying attention. I don't Hip-hop? Li- yeah, like, people... P- hip-hop, to me, is, like, the thing that grabs attention. Now, I'm not saying that it's all great, but you have the attention now. Hip-hop is the most dominant culture <clears throat> and genre of music of the last 30 years. Yeah, but right now, to me, it's like, I'm not going to be listening to half of this music in 10 years. The stuff that's out? Yeah, I, I don't mm-hmm. think so. Mm-hmm. Who do you think is timeless right now? J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, a- everybody on Dreamville. Like, that's hands down. Mm-hmm. Would yeah. you want to rap on any of your songs? <laughs> no. Because I know you play around <laughs> with it, but you would never be like, okay, I'm going to do... Nah. I'll write somebody raps, but I, won't. My, I don't feel like I got a good rap voice. I got a sexy voice. People want to hear me sing, so I'm like, all right. <laughs> Taylor, what part of Philly are you from? <laughs> <clears throat> what part? Um, are you, like, one of the either West North? I'm from West. Yeah. Why'd you, <laughs> Why you asking for She Why said West or North. West? She like he got a because, beard. Oh no, I'm not from Georgia. Now they said the West, the West people could dress, right? Is that what they said? No, fuck. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> Damn. Wow. She said no to that. Wow. That's messed up. <laughs> well, somebody from West must have heard her. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> PNB Rock. PNB Rock. <laughs> he nah, got a lot of flack I bang with P&B Rock He probably just don't know I'm from West <laughs> Got you so He I mean, got trapped into that Cause like I moved around, Like my parents got divorced Right So I lived in West Philly All the way up till I was 6th grade And then I moved to Northeast For like 2 years what, Y'all probably even know Where Northeast is But then I moved to um, Jersey With my dad So it was like I went to high school In, a, in the suburbs From 10th to 12th Mm-hmm. What's the difference between the, the Philly sections? <laughs> I don't mean, for me, for me, I don't like I don't like saying it because then it's like, all right, when I go home, then people are like, yo, I heard what you said about North. I yes, heard. I'm like, that's nah. what happened to PNB Rock. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be trying to be low key when I go home. Now, if I say something, the block gonna be hot. I'm like, yo, why you say that? You know, my mom is from Germantown. I'm like, oh my god. Are you, are you suffer from a medical condition called aclasia? How you pronounce it? Yeah, it's called aclasia. What, what, I don't even know how to spell it. It's so crazy. A c h a l a s i a. Oh, he went to school. <laughs> 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 what, what exactly is that? Yo, so it's a rare disease that affects your the motility and, and your esophagus. So like pushing food from point A to point B. Or Z, I should say. So how does that impact your music career? Because you need your well, esophagus to sing, don't you? <laughs> Technically, Why it's two days. Di- he just said it like a like a pastor, low key. You need your esophagus, sir. Heal your esophagus in the name of Jesus. <laughs> heal him, heal him, heal him. This guy's crazy. Yo, <laughs> yo. So for real, it's like it's the weirdest shit because it's internal. So you really like I didn't even know what it was. I'm just like yo, this shit's weird. Like, but essentially the nerves. And your esophagus are like deteriorating, so it's like damn, some weird. Yeah, so and what happens? You get surgery. I got surgery for it, yeah, mm-hmm. but it's it's so rare they don't even know like how you get it or anything. It's usually like people that's sixty and up that get it. Mm-hmm. Does it hurt? Nah. So how'd you know you had it? Like what was the symptom? Because you like regurgitate all the time. Oh, like gas almost. You were throwing acid, no, acid like, reflux. Actually throwing up. Oh throwing up. damn! I was trying not to say that, but I There's said regurgitate. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so it was crazy. Like, obviously, I'm a big boy, so I had got real slim, and I was like, nah. Man, like, like, who I, who, I, who I slept with raw that got me skinny? <laughs> no, bro, I was, that that was, I'm not going to cash you. That was the first thought I <laughs> thought. I was like, damn. She got me. And then I was like, nah, not at all. That was not the case. And then I was like, all right. I went and got checked. I was straight. And then I was like, all right, what could it be? I was like, yo, like I and it was weird because that was the most healthy I was eating at the time when I started getting symptoms. I was like, my grandma would cook meals every day. I was sleeping on her floor and everything, so she would like make sure I had like a proper meal. And I was like, this is weird. Like I was eating bullshit. No problems. No problems. Mm-hmm. Switched it up. I'm like damn, like what the fuck is happening to my body? Like, so that's just weird. I like to spread a little awareness about it because low key I always see like. People with low like symptoms. I'm like, yo, like, like this one time, this girl, she's like, yo, I can't like keep food down. I'm like, yo, you might need to go see a specialist. And she's like, for real? I was like, yeah, you might got aclasia or something or something in that family. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And did she, did she have it? Ah, uh, she never went. She's probably scared. It's like one of those the kind of diseases that just make you afraid because it's like, especially we love food, like American culture, everything you do. Except for the Breakfast Club, it's based around food. Damn, mm-hmm. yeah, I ain't got no food. You just shot it up. <laughs> I, got I, got smoothie. I, got smooth- I got a smoothie. You hungry? Nah, I'm literally good. But I'm just, I was just pointing that out. I noticed. I was like, oh y'all, y'all ain't got pills, no food. You know, we, we... Y'all do the intermittent fasting, huh? <laughs> now, now see, you don't talk about sex in an explicit way in your music, right? Nah, nah. I try not to, at least. Mm-hmm. Why? Why is that? Is that because of the Christian background, or just? Nah, I just feel like I look at the state of music and. Behind the scenes, you know, songwriters, producers, we always talking. It's like, yo, why is people always doing this or why? So it's like instead of complaining, I feel like why not contribute to the culture in a positive way where it's like, you know, every girl's not a bitch. Mm-hmm. Most of them ain't. Some of them just tired of your shit, like <laughs> straight up. So it's like for me, I'm a lover kind of person. So it's like 
why would I fake and put any other kind of energy out there? Like, that's not me. I don't even argue with my girl or nothing. You know what I'm saying? We just gonna talk it out. Mm-hmm. So you say when you say you never degrade women in your music, it's, it's the language specifically. Like you wouldn't write a song like these hoes ain't loyal or something like that. <laughs> me personally, no. But I would sing that for song. somebody else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like to me, I just feel like as a culture, you gotta look at things. Well, I mean, also I'm not like 19 years old either. I'm 27, so it's like I've lived a regular life for most of my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like I understand what music does. Mm-hmm. to people so it's like you're hurting or helping whether you know it or not so mm-hmm. it's like you gotta take responsibility low key where, where did you learn that though like like what instilled those values in you was it the church was it the Christian background was it a you know maybe you just learned from your own experiences like what instilled that value in you to say you know what I'm not gonna degrade women Uh, I feel like me seeing my mother like my mom was an artist so it's like I see how men maneuver in the industry I was like, dang, like, I'm not gonna lie, for a tiny period, I was one of those guys, but seeing it face to face and like seeing the effect that it had on my family is like, man, I never wanna be that person to that extent. And also, that's all that's out there. So it's like, when kids listen to music, that's all they're hearing. So it's like, I'd rather be, you know, the oddball and talk some love shit. That's not being odd, though. In, In this era, I feel like not a lot of people are getting the light for like doing positive stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause like I'm not doing no gimmicks, I'm not on Instagram, like pooping on the ground or nothing. So it's like, I'm just thinking of the most bizarre stuff. Like that's what's next, somebody gonna do it. Somebody did that that already, Flavor (laughs) of Love, season one. That was an accident. (laughs) She keeps track of all the bizarre shit. Do you think that there's a shift back to doing music that's more respectful and loving toward women? I feel like it's always been there. It just hasn't been Been at the forefront, you know? highlighted, right. Yeah, so, but. You know, that's why I'm very appreciative of being here because, like, when I watch The Breakfast Club, because I watch The Breakfast Club, I'm like, yo, that's dope. Like, I love when y'all would have, like, certain people up here, like, talking positivity or, like, empowering the culture. Like, like who? Real estate. I can't. What's the guy who talks about the real estate? <laughs> what's the guy? Which one? I mean, I don't remember his name. His name's, like, his Mark name's or Envy. something. He's from Baltimore. Oh, Mark, Mark Whitten. Yeah. Uh, Mark Whitten. Mark like, when you guys there. had him up here, I yeah, was like, yeah. that's dope. Like, I, I respect stuff like that because mm-hmm. it's like, all right. Obviously, you got a job to do, so you people come up here. You can't determine what they're gonna talk about, but right. every now and then you get some real gems and jewels where you like, that's good. Right? You gotta have the perfect balance of rashness and righteousness. You know, hundred percent. I mean? That's why I feel like why I'm doing me what I do because like I right, sorry a bunch of ratchet shit. I mean, I'm not knocking <laughs> it. Get your money. You want to balance have fun, it out because I'm a jam to the shit too, but. At night, if you really in love with somebody, you should turn on pink sweats. Like you shouldn't be having intercourse with your wife to the amigos. Oh no! Yes. <laughs> Every time it's like, dang, you don't love her at all. But let's backtrack a little because you did say my girl, so you are in a relationship. Yeah. How long have you guys been together? Uh, actually, together probably like it's new, new. Like oh, it's new, new. Yeah. So none oh, yeah, of these don't songs. Don't be claiming were, her publicly. Yet. None of these songs were about nah, I her. I love my shorty. Huh? None of these songs were about her yet. No, 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 no. How did you guys meet? Oh, we met years ago. But um, I feel like... Did you have them old pink sweats on when you met her? <laughs> the H&M sweats? I was not up like that. <laughs> oh, so, she, so she's with you because she really likes you. Not yeah, you. for sure. There you mm-hmm. go. So how did this come about? What made you get decide to lock it in? I mean, I feel like I got everything I want now. Like, I'm, I'm like, I have money, material things. I, and I'm just like... I'm not trying to share this with no hoes. Like, when I go on vacation, I'm not trying to remember your I'm name. I'm supposed to call them hoes, man. You just said. Just listen. You just said listen, you don't call women whores. There are certain things in my <laughs> brain, from my upbringing, which I'm still washing out, that leak up to be Absolutely. We all were raised wrong, so we're constantly <laughs> yeah. unlearning things every day. I'm unlearning, yeah. but also, for me, it's like, when you, when you get to a certain level of success, and obviously, I don't have $100 million, but... Like what I do have, like I nobody in my family ever has. So right. it's like I have everything. Why do I want to like Run go to freaking Dubai with some girl? I'm like, what's your name again? Like that's stupid to me. Kevin Lyles told me ten years ago. Kevin Lyles said, I can't tell you to get married, but I can tell you to find somebody to share your experiences. Exactly, with. that's exactly what it is, and I and I enjoy sharing experiences with her. Mm. Now you said you grew up with your pops, right? Yeah, I grew up with my dad. 
So how did you? How did your mom? How was she in the industry? If y'all was in the church at the same time, or was she was in the gospel? Well, she was in the gospel industry, but it, men is men. <laughs> like, niggas is niggas. Like it's and I, I told my mom I was like, stop dating Christians. <laughs> <laughs> All these Muslims in Philly, you want to take Christians? <laughs> I'm like, leave Christian men alone. I'm like, listen, I'm your son. I'm a Christian man. I'm wilding out here. Don't trust niggas like me wow. in church. So, like, once I left church, I became more honest because, like, I have nothing to hide. Right? Yeah. That's Did she listen? Nah, she's still into Christian dudes. She's like, I need somebody else into God. <laughs> Goodness gracious. What, what, role did, what role did your father play in your life? Oh, man. My dad, for me, was, like, very important because, like, in my neighborhood, nobody had a dad. Like, I could probably count on one hand how many of my friends was, like, even mentioned a dad, right. like, straight up. So, for me, I felt more like, okay, like, I have a shot, like, my dad is really in my life. Mm-hmm. And my dad's not perfect, by the way, but, you know, like, he's there. And, mm-hmm. like, he would pick us up from school. And my dad used to drive limos. And you come ride through the hood in a limo when limos was cool. Please do not do this anymore. <laughs> 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 and he would pick us up. And it's funny how, like, when you're young, kids be like, oh, my God, y'all rich. I'm like, we live in the same poor areas, y'all. How are we rich? Right. It's a limo. But, but you had that limo. Yeah, like, it wasn't his. It was that was his job. He was driving a limo. But it must have been nice to get picked up in a limo. Crazy. I would be sitting in that joint like, ah. <laughs> did your father, uh, did he have anything to do with, you know, instilling the wrong things in you as a man? Like your idea of what manhood should be or what it looks like? Um, Not necessarily being a man, but being an individual. Because I feel like parents, in a way, most of them, they try to, like, make you into a person they think you should be. And, like, for me... Like, I've been wearing my shirt open like this since I was a kid. I don't know why. I just did. So it was like, my dad be like, hey, man, what you doing? Close your shirt. I'm like, nah, man, it's me. Like, Or like when I'm eating dinner, sit like this. Like, now I go anywhere. I'll sit how I want to sit. I'm like, those rules, dad. Mm-hmm. Oh, you mean like get your elbows off the table? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I sit like this, like this. <laughs> I put my feet on the chair. I don't care. It's like. But I'm me. I'm truly me now, and I feel like when you're able to be yourself, you're the most happy. Like my dad was trying to instill things in me to be normal, and I'm like, I'm not normal in the his aspect. idea of normal. Yeah, like I'm not normal in the aspect of like I want to be like anybody else. Normal, right? you know, that's well, that's, gross, that's my point. That's good. Your food, is, your food is on the table. No, I'm not gonna put my feet on. Right. I'm saying like, if I wanted to, if I'm at home, right. not at a restaurant. But like you know how you chilling, you got your little table in front, you might go like this eat your cereal, whatever you eat, you know what I mean? But my dad always, he was very strict on us, but I know why, because of the environment, he didn't want us to, like, be another statistic, so he would be, gotcha. you know, very hard on us. When you started wearing your pink sweatpants, did he give you flack for that? Like, why are you wearing pink, boy? Nah, my dad knows what's up. <laughs> Do you remember your first show that you did? Was it in Philly, your first show as a solo artist? Nah, I was in New York. It was in New I York. was living in New York when mm-hmm. I um, pursued my artist career. And what was that show like? Was it sold out or was it still relatively new? Not bragging, but every single show I've ever done since day one has been sold out. Dang. Talk that is. For you? There you go. For me. Was it SOBs? I've, I've never done anybody else's tour. I've only done my own. What was the show? SOBs? Nah, I did it at, uh, man, where my manager at? Uh, Baby's All Right. It was Baby's All Right, and I think that was in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And then we did the Roxy, that's LA. And I did. What's the what's the venue here? Oh. What's the one you went to, Yee? It was on the Lower East Side. It was it Bowery. Yeah, it was the Bowery. Was that Bowery. sounds yeah, super familiar. So side. yeah. How did you hook up with your management? Because it seems like your management has been really great for you as far as with the streaming and with getting signed. Uh, my manager essentially, I found him through a friend. Shout out my boys, uh, Suitcase City. I was writing with them, like on their stuff. And then I had met him, and we just became really good friends. And I had an artist that I was developing, and I was like, yo, I know how to do the music. I don't really understand 100% the business side of it. Mm-hmm. Help me do the business. I was in exchange right for these guys for free. Wow. Just help me, you know, do this thing with my artist. And um, he was just a stand-up dude, mm-hmm. and I noticed that he has specific skills that I didn't. So I was like, yo, you should be my manager. <laughs> he was like, I never managed a writer before. I'm like, you got it. Like, we we can do it. 
How can you trust him though if you don't really know the business? That's the thing. It's like he would show me stuff. Like you know, how, like you know how sometimes they say you could teach a man to fish, he eat for a thousand years or something like that, or you could just give it to him. He would always show me stuff. He'd be like mm -hmm. yo, it's how you whoa, whoa. and I'm like okay cool, and I just kept note of like his character. So it was like. Right. When I was working with my artists, I saw how he was. So I'm like, usually people are consistent with who they are. If they're a bad person, they hiding it, but it's consistent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So and if they say you want to, if you want to see a person's true character, watch how they treat people that can't do nothing for them. Exactly. So and he just he just has very good character, and I have I met so many bad people <laughs> that Welcome you recognize a good. Welcome to the industry. <laughs> yeah, it's like for years, every every year, I'm like I'm right at the door. Somebody like, yo, do this, and I'll set you over there. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Like, I just, I what just. What they wanted you to do? Like, maybe write with a certain person that I just didn't like. Like me, I'm, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't do this for money. So it's like for mm -hmm. me, I love music. So it's like, this is what I've chosen to do in my life. I'm not gonna be no flunky like doing this and doing that. I want to work on things that mean something, or it's paying me. If it's not either one. We can't. We didn't, there's no point of doing it. Anybody can pay you though. What if the person? Not saying like that pay means you? something. Nah, but that's what I'm saying. It's got to be either or. Like right. the check got to outweigh how mm -hmm. I feel. It's like, all right, well, my mom needs her rent paid, so it's like, all right, if I need to do that, mm -hmm. I got to do what I got to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But most part, I'm like not jumping on just anything. You did. You work with Tierra Whack too, right? Love Tierra Whack. You had a fifteen minute project and she had a fifteen minute project. Why are y'all why do y'all youngins do that? What is that? <laughs> My project was fifteen minutes, I didn't even know. The EP They said it's under fifteen minutes, that's what they said. Oh yeah, see, that's what I thought. I was li I was listening to uh Tierra <laughs> Whack Whack World. I'm like, every song is a minute. I thought something was wrong with my screaming service. <laughs> like, why do y'all do that? <laughs> I mean, for me, I didn't do fifteen songs that was a minute. I just did a short project. So mm -hmm. But for me it was like I wanted to give people substance but in a format that they can understand or I understand, but that's palatable for them. Like, it's, songs are shorter, so it's like for me, it's like, am I gonna give somebody a four minute song? Like, they don't, they never heard of me. Why are you gonna listen to four minutes? I'm not that arrogant to be like, oh, you gonna listen to me? It's like, nah, I'm gonna give you something dope, boom, and hope that you like it. And then I'm gonna drop another project, and then you know, I'm working on my album right now. Music is so disposable, though, man. Especially when like very. you're a very Deep R and B artist. Does that ever worry you? No, because I know I'm giving people quality. So it's like if you giving people something real, you're not worried about. Oh, I mean, they gonna come back? Nah, they gonna be back. You know the name of the album or when it's coming out? Uh, the album. I'll try. It's Pink Friday. Pink, Pink. Uh, no, no, I can't think. Of, I'm you don't on know the spot. The name of it? No, I know it. I'm I'm at the breakfast <laughs> club. I'm a little nervous. Okay, <laughs> I don't even sure know. Yeah. Album, I don't know Pink if I'm supposed to say, but I'm working on it right now. It's called Pink Undisclosed. Pink in the clothes. <laughs> what? Pink Undisclosed. He said Undisclosed. Oh, undisclosed. Oh, undisclosed. Pink How I'm many like, songs what? you done? It starts with Pink. Let's just say that. Okay. I've, I've done a lot. Um, so I actually did like Pink ten. Print. So you almost done. Well, I mean, for an album, I use. You know, it's weird. I never make more than the songs that I need, which is. This album process has been a little different for me, so it's like I'm making a little bit more. Got you. But each song is live, so it takes a little longer. Like I'm in there playing the drums, playing keys, playing guitars, so Got it you. takes a little longer. You seem very in tune with your sacred masculine. You know what the sacred masculine is? What is that? Sacred masculine is like uh like what is this like redefining our roles, like asking what is gender, is there gender? It's just like a time of like transformation and consciousness amongst men. I mean, I think gender exists, obviously. But I think the roles of, like, men, it's like, yo, like, why you got to be hard all the time? Or why are you pretending to be hard all the time? Because, like, in my hood, it's like, niggas be, like, so hard. And it's like, hmm. but at the end of the night, yo, I got to go home. My girl going to trip. So you love somebody. Like, you're not hard. Like, you just out here doing this thing. But there is somebody you love that you would do anything for. So it's like, show that side sometimes, you know what I mean? That's why you should study the sacred masculine. That's exactly what it is. It's just basically um, dissecting what we believed in the past and recreating what the future will bring amongst the energies of men and women. That's dope. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. All right. Oh, Pink Swiss, we appreciate you for joining us. No, I appreciate EP you EP is out right now. Make sure you pick it up.
and his pink sweats. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.